everyone, Riaz Datu here with 3D Crystal and Cockpit 3D. And today we're going to be talking about a topic that many of you have asked about, which is how to avoid tiling lines in your large 3D crystals. Now, if you're a consumer out there looking to buy a 3D crystal for yourself or for someone you care about, this is why it is so important for you to understand the science behind what goes in to producing your 3D crystal. This video will actually give you insight as to why when you purchase a 3D crystal from us or from one of our many resellers out there or from a laser operator anywhere in the world who's using our Cockpit 3D software, why you're going to be getting the best quality 3D crystal hands down. So what is tiling? Tiling are grid lines that appear when a large crystal is being made or when a crystal is being made that has very bright subjects within it. Here, let me show you what it looks like. Now, if you look at this flat point cloud, it illustrates tiling quite well. You can see a very evident horizontal tiling line here and a couple vertical ones there. Now, what does this translate into when using the same laser to burn a 3D crystal? Here's what it looks like. A very obvious horizontal tiling line along the bottom, one across eye level, and one along the hat. The one across the hat is less obvious because it's darker, but on brighter parts of the image, you can definitely see the tiling. Using the same laser but calibrating the settings, here's what it looks like. And this is the power of Cockpit 3D and knowing how to produce a good 3D crystal. So, in order for you to understand how to achieve these results, it's important that you understand the science behind how tiling is created and then we can get into the solution as well. So let's head over to my chalkboard and dive a little deeper. So you can think of the pattern in which a laser strikes as swinging from side to side. So the laser comes down, it meets its main strike point, and it burns a microfracture or a crack. And then it moves outwards till it reaches its maximum point and it burns cracks all along the way. And it does the same thing on this side too. The maximum diameter of most lasers is somewhere around seven centimeters. Okay? So if you are producing a crystal that's eight centimeters and the image of the person, we're looking at a profile shot here, if the image of the person is seven centimeters, you have no problem. That laser is going to come down. It's going to meet its main strike point. It's going to continue swinging all along. It's going to build layer by layer all the way until it meets the or reaches the tip of the nose and it's done. And the quality is going to be fantastic. Smaller crystals are very easy to produce and images that are less than seven centimeters are generally very easy to produce as well. Now, let's get into what causes tiling. So irrespective of the crystal size, if the image is going to be larger than seven centimeters, so in this case, let's draw it out as being double that, all right? So we'll say that this image from edge to edge, not crystal, but the image, the point cloud within, is 14 centimeters, edge to edge. What the laser is going to do is it's going to calculate two tiles, okay? So there's an imaginary line here, right? And it's going to see one tile here and one tile here. And what it will do is it will start working on the first tile first. It comes down, meets its main strike point, comes along, does the layer, continues to build a stack of layers till it's done. Then it moves along, the table moves, the laser again starts from the bottom and works its way on top. And we're done. So what's the problem? Well, the issue can be demonstrated or illustrated if you think back to grade 9 mathematics. So we have a triangle. The longest side of a triangle, this side here, is referred to as the hypotenuse, right? So think of it as the laser. The laser is coming down. It meets its strike point over there. That's the shortest distance. As the laser travels to its furthest distance and meets the strike point there, it's much weaker because it's had to travel a lot more. So you'll end up with a lot brighter points in the middle and it'll start to get weaker as you move your way out. So let's think of this 
from the point of the laser. The laser is first building this tile, right? And it continues building the whole stack of tiles. Where was the weakest point? The weakest point was always along here because this is where the main point was. This is the weakest point all the way along the top. And then the table moves and it starts working on this tile. It goes all the way to the top. And again, common point being along this edge where it is weak. And so therefore you end up seeing the tiling line where the two tiles uh, connected. I like to refer to it sometimes as a stitch line as well. So how do we solve this problem? Well, the first thing you can do is try increasing the power of your laser um, so that that laser, when it's meeting that furthest point, is powerful enough that it, it kind of looks a little invisible um, and not as obvious. This is one solution, but you might find that when you increase your power, the image cracks and therefore you're not able to get rid of that tiling line simply by increasing your power. So that gets us on to solution number two. So solution number two is Let's think of the two layers, okay? Or the, the two stacks of layers. So we've got this stack here, and we've got this stack here. So what the laser is doing, just imagine this side is, remember, being the, the face and this side being the rest of the body, right? So what the laser is doing is it's stopping the, uh, the tile or, or the end of the strike point over here, and it's stopping it over here. So again, you're seeing that stitch line. What you want to do is you want to change your settings so that the laser overlaps a little bit and it overlaps into this tile and it overlaps into this tile so instead of stopping there it'll continue burning into that tile and when it burns this tile it continues burning into this tile so you end up with this common area right along here where it has overlapped and by overlapping you essentially have double the number of points and so that tiling line becomes a little invisible. Common question is how much should that overlap be? Uh, I like to use an overlap of eight millimeters. All right. Now, this might still not solve the problem. And here's why. It builds this stack. And now it's going to go move to the next stack. And we've asked it to overlap, right? So the laser comes. And it's trying to overlap to get into here, but we've already got points here. So these points are interrupting that laser. Every time it's trying to get to the overlap strike point, it's being interrupted by what's already being burned. And so therefore, third solution, which will really, really help your quality, is to change the pattern in which the tile is being constructed. Instead of building the entire tile from bottom to top, set it to burn a few layers on one tile for the table to move and then burn the next tile, right? So you still have your eight millimeter uh, overlap here, but now it's doing it a few layers at a time. It'll do this layer, then it'll do this layer, then it'll do this layer, then it'll do this layer. And that way you're not having the laser interrupted by dots or by points to get to its strike point. And when you do that, the quality of your overall burn will improve. Again, a very common question is how much uh, the, the build should be before moving to the next tile. You know, this one can be played with, I'd say maybe somewhere around one millimeter or two millimeters. So let it build one or two millimeters at a time. Of course, the con to this is that what you're gonna see is, is that the, uh, the laser takes longer to burn the crystal, but really the quality is gonna be far better. Now that's how it's done. Hopefully it helps you with your laser machine in producing the best quality crystals. Every user interface for every machine is different, so you're definitely going to want to check with your manufacturer how to do these settings, or you can always feel free to reach out to us, and we'll be more than happy to assist you. I hope this video helps you, and if it does, please subscribe, like, and share.